Welcome back! <laughs> I'm sure most of you guys are like, what? Since when? Where? Have you been? And I'm random as hell, so I felt inspired to make a video and so I decided to come back and here I am. I don't know how long I'm going to stay around, I don't know what videos I'm going to do, but I'm here right now and I'm ready to go. So it's going to seem weird that a video that I'm making after so long is about being an esthetician but to be honest with you I'm making this video and what pulled me to make this video is people in the comments who were thinking about going to school to be an esthetician or people who are in the field who have questions and that kind of like drew me back to like basics of you know just giving you guys my own input my perspective and what I've experienced and sharing with you all which is what I came to YouTube to do in the first place so it's like back to basics all right so how I'm thinking about breaking down this video is starting a little bit with my own personal journey and then telling you about what you may expect from things as far as education once you get into the field commission that you might make or money that you'll be making around that uh, skills to acquire that will make you more marketable so I just I just want to take care of all the areas that um, questions that you may have obviously you're probably gonna have more you know what to do with those but if that interests you, then keep watching. All right, so an esthetician is a skincare therapist. We're the ones that work in the spas doing typically waxing and facials, but you can find us doing a whole bunch of other things. We can work in medical offices, beauty counters, and anywhere else we'll find work. You know what I mean if you're an esthetician. <laughs> I'm gonna try to move along as swiftly as possible because there is a lot to unpack in this video. The first thing I want to share with you, like I said, is my own personal journey. I have been an esthetician for a very long time. I started and I graduated back in 2004 from Pivot Point Academy, which is a pretty well-known school for cosmetology and um, becoming an esthetician. You know, back in the day, I wanted to be a makeup artist. <laughs> like, I was... I'm not gonna tell you my age. It was a long time ago, like I said, I graduated in 2004. You can guess my age. But I went to school because I wanted to be an esthetician and my mom was a cosmetologist and she was just like, oh yeah, go to beauty school. And you know, to be honest with you, I didn't have much else going on. So I was like, all right, let me try it. And I'm actually quite grateful that I made that decision. At first I was so annoyed because I was just like, this isn't gonna make me a makeup artist but it opened up so many other doors and opportunities and allowed me to see parts of myself that I didn't know. So <laughs> once I graduated from school, I was thrusted into a world that I did not anticipate. And this is why I am doing this video because you'll go to school, they'll tell you one thing and they'll obviously they're gonna try to sell you into becoming one, but you've really gotta know that this is what you want to do. So let me tell you a little bit about what I encountered. I went from school, luckily I got a job really quickly. The school that I had had a placement program so that worked out nicely. Um, I didn't come about from my placement program. There was actually a speaker from Lancome who came to speak to my class and I signed up because I wanted to venture into this area that they were doing. They were doing a brow studio, new brow studio at the time. This is before even Benefit was doing brows. And I thought that was interesting and so I went straight to that and I started working for Lancome right out of school. Um, in their brow studio. I, I honestly don't even know if they have a brow studio anymore. That sounds really bad, but I don't know. However, I started doing that and all I did was brows. Even though I was studying to, to go and do skin and hopefully makeup, I ended up doing brows. That was my first, first gig and it paid really well at the time. I was pretty happy. So I was relatively young, making good money, but it was also quite limiting because I wanted to explore more areas of what it meant to be an esthetician. From there, I worked in spas, I worked for big brands, I've worked for big spas, small spas, and everything in between. Okay, so let's talk about education. Typically, you're gonna go to school, you're gonna find a beauty school and earn a certain amount of credit hours your schooling will be divided typically between, you know, 
knowledge base, so textbook learning, and then practicals. Eventually, textbook kind of gets shoved out to the side and you're gonna be doing a lot of practicals, which is basically doing the actual technique and work on each other, most likely. And then eventually, maybe depending on the school you go to, you might be working on live clients. So it's all just to prepare you for the real field of being an esthetician. There you will accrue, 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 a certain amount of hours. Um, for me, I went to school in Chicago and I worked in Chicago. And for them in, I think it's still the same amount, it was 750 credit hours I had to earn before I can then take the state board exam. Because being an esthetician is a licensed profession, you will have to take the test and pass. Funny enough, a lot of the material is based off of being clean and blood-borne pathogens and things like that, just making sure that we are protecting the public. It's not gonna quiz you on your effleurage movements or how you waxed a Brazilian or did a Brazilian. So maybe the test has changed? Most likely it hasn't. So from there, um, I picked a school that was kind of general. Pivot Point Academy is kind of like an overall. And, and I stayed away. At, there was a time where I kind of was like, man, should I have gone with an Ayurveda or a Mario Chikosi, more of a branded school? But it's it works nicely if you're looking to go with that brand in general and stick with them. Personally, I'm glad that I picked Pivot Point because I was able to have a general education and not specifically geared towards any one brand, which also increased my marketability. So typically with your education, depending on your location, you can see anywhere between 600 to 1,000 hours that are credit hours that are gonna be needed for you to be an esthetician. And this can be accomplished anywhere between six to seven months if you're going as a full-time student but if you have to opt as a part-time student, it could take anywhere between nine months to, I believe, a year. Some of the questions that you might wanna ask yourself while you're in school is, are you doing this to work in a spa um, where you'll find more waxing and facials? Are you looking to work at a beauty counter or a brow artist for if Lancome still has their studio Lancome or Benefit? You know, are you looking to work in a doctor's office uh, for a dermatologist? You know, it's getting really focused as you start learning and ask questions. Oh my goodness, ask questions. This is why I'm doing a video, ask questions. But I'm not the only esthetician. There's lots of different estheticians who have different experiences. So reach out, communicate. I'm sure that they wouldn't mind, you know, talking to you about their experience or giving you any advice that might be helpful to you. Helpful to you, 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 you. <laughs> Skills to acquire. If you don't know how to wax, you're going to be in trouble. I'm just saying. Waxing is a good percentage of the business that you're gonna encounter if you work in a spa. So get really comfortable with that. Brazilian, Brazilian, Brazilian. They're gonna ask you, can you do a Brazilian? And I know women that I went to school with that just wouldn't do Brazilians. Crazy, crazy losing out on money in your pocket. And you know what? You become even more marketable if you know how to do Brazilians on men. I know I did, I had no problem with it. And the men that I encountered that I did it on, they were, um, uh, courteous, I guess you can say. It wasn't like any funny business. It was very like cut and dry and normal conversation and did my business. So um, they pay even more for that. So have skills. Being a facialist, don't go and you know, like just whatever. Like build your massage technique, build your knowledge, market yourself. You're like, I went to school and I, when I graduated, I was working in the field and we didn't have all the opportunities that we have now, all the all the abilities to market yourself on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, I don't even know what else has it out there, but nowadays there's so many areas or avenues for you to market yourself, get really good on that. Build your interpersonal skills, honey, because you're gonna need them. And oh, honey, oh, honey, if you think you're not gonna sell, you are. You're gonna sell this business about selling, I'm sorry not into the medical aspect of being an esthetician and you still want to increase your marketability, get a dual license. 
That is when you are an esthetician and a massage therapist because that is going to also, a lot of times places don't wanna hire you if you're not both, to be honest with you. This is like a real thing. So if you can go and get your license as an esthetician, go get your license as a massage therapist. And that's gonna increase your ability to make more money and marketability. You're going to do a lot of waxing if you work in a spa, so becoming really fast at waxing is and really good at waxing super key to boost your business because if you think about it and you're taking a client but you're taking a whole hour trying to do let's say a bikini honey you are cutting into your pockets because if you can do a bikini in 15 minutes well how many time how many bikinis can you fit into an hour that's the basics y'all that's how it works as far as being an esthetician and then, you know, as far as being a, a facialist, if you're doing facials and stuff like that, honing in on your technique, be really skilled and knowledgeable about the skin, about the products that you have available for them. And then also your massage technique, because at the end of the day, they're laying on a table for an hour. You got to make them feel good. And that was super important was instead of going into a facial and just like, I don't care, I don't care. No, really stay present with them and give them all you got because honestly, it pays off at the end. When your client knows that you are showing up fully for them, they will appreciate it. As far as money is concerned, let's talk the dollars. This is a predominantly commission-based Fields. I'll let you know that right off there. If you happen to work for a dermatologist, you might get rolled into commission and hourly. It's always nice when you get to have that because that is a nice little cushion. Um, but majority of it is commission based for sure. What can you can expect? You're looking at a 50. When you first start out, you might do 60, 40, go up to 50, 50. And then if you're really good or time on the job, you may even get to 60, 40. But those are the main breakdowns of commission based. Like I said before, it takes time to build a clientele. So when you have to keep that in mind, if you're a person who it's like, no, I don't have the luxury to be able to work in a commission job, this one might not be the one for you unless you take on a different avenue. Like I said, like medical esthetician, which to be honest with you, that's where a lot of the money is, is being in a medical esthetician because you're working in a dermatologist's office. The one thing you will also learn being an esthetician, just a normal, regular esthetician, most likely they don't have insurance. You're probably not gonna get an hourly. Uh, what else? <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, you know, there were certain things about the industry that I just felt like wasn't conducive for somebody. For me, I think it was when I became a single mom that's when I could no longer work on in that industry because um, I just felt like I needed something a little bit more consistent and day to day being the sole provider for my child. One of the things that I, w I wasn't fully aware of at the time when I graduated is that when you do work in a spot, it does take time to build up a clientele. You have to build relationships. You're looking for that repeat client to come in. And that means that you need to acquire certain interpersonal skills to learning how to communicate. And one of the biggest things that they don't tell you about in school is you're going to sell. You're going to sell or you're not going to be a very successful esthetician. Trust me. I think that was a huge eye opener for me is that I'm here thinking that I'm going to do all my skills and I'm going to be really good at it. And next thing you know is there is pressure in selling because it's not just the service that you're providing. First of all, I'm a big believer that if you are providing a good service as an esthetician, you should also be recommending products or things that your client should be doing at home to help continue the service that you did provide for them. So that's why I was pretty successful in sales as an esthetician. It's only because I, I cared about how this was going to affect them. Like, what is the goals of my client? What do they want to achieve? I was super dedicated on making sure that they were educated on their skin and products and what to use and how to use them. So it kind of worked out. But if you are not looking to sell or having to interact with people, honey, you are in the wrong industry. <laughs> One of the number one tips I can say for you if you do choose to go down this path as an esthetician 
is continual education. School's gonna give you about that much of education that you need to really have to be a complete esthetician. You wanna go, if you're lucky enough to get schools that you know, pack in all kinds of things like microdermabrasion and peels and, I think we did peels actually, that's pretty basic. Um, laser or anything else, especially medical, go for it. And sometimes we have to put up the money ourselves, but trust me, it's gonna pay back when you're able to have a certain skill. Like you may be in a room full of estheticians, but what can you do more than that girl can? What can you do better, you know? And so that's really important is continual education. You're gonna have to do it anyways to maintain your license, but what it does is it adds so much more value to you and marketability. So definitely continue your education, go for those courses, go for those classes whenever you get a chance to. All right guys, that's all I have for you now. I'm sure you're gonna have tons of questions. I welcome your questions. I hope I didn't leave anything out. I, I, I try to do these videos, I try to do like little outlines and be like, okay, bullet point, this, 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 this. But when we're sitting here, I don't have a script. I'm just talking off the dome. So if I miss things, I'm so sorry. I will meet you in our comments. And I'm just so glad that I was able to come back for you guys. Thank you so much for continuing to show me support, love, commenting, and liking my videos. I get so much love from you guys, even for the year that I didn't film. And I really appreciate it because I actually sit there and read these comments, crazy enough. But it's what brought me back. So I really hope that you enjoyed the video. Don't forgive me, don't forgive me. I'm so out of practice. I think I'm, you're supposed to get like a thumbs up, subscribe to me, that whole rigmarole. Is that a saying anymore? And did I say it properly? I don't know, but y'all know what I'm talking about. I'll see you next time. Ciao.